Hello everyone, my name is Saurabh and in today's video we are going to learn how to create list forms using Nentex. So Nentex is a third party tool which you install on top of your SharePoint environment and uh, using Nentex forms you can create forms similar to this. What you are seeing on the screen at the moment is a service catalog form. Earlier this form was a PDF based a word based form in the organization so um, I just created a digitized version which is done using SharePoint list and Nentex forms. All the fields which you are seeing on the screen are coming in from SharePoint list and the entire look and feel complete facade of the form is done using Nintex forms. For us to be able to create a form of this sort we first need to create a list. This is a list here yeah? so we are going to start from the scratch but before that hit like subscribe and hit the bell icon. It does take a lot of time to create these videos it would be very helpful to get some support. So first thing is we need to get into the site content, hit new and hit list. Now we're going to create a list. Yeah, there is one more step uh, which is like to add the Nintex forms. I'm just assuming that that Nintex forms is already added into your site contents of the of the site. And uh, if it's not there yet, you need to talk to your SharePoint admin or Nintex people. They can help you get it up over there. Now once the list is created now we need to create some list columns some fields ideally you would know what the fields are if you are creating the fields uh, if you're trying to create a pdf or a word-based form into nintex uh, then you can just have a look at the form and can figure out what the fields would be yeah so uh, in this case because we are doing a fresh form kind of a thing um, it's more it's not just a lift and shift it's more of a, a new thing that we are creating so i had all the requirements in a in a, in a, in a, in a ppt which i've just shown you on the screen i was able to get all the fields from that and i created a detailed sharepoint list because that is a prerequisite for nintex forms and uh yeah let's just have a look at it okay now i'm just gonna take a pause in here and i'm gonna create all the fields for you and then we'll again show you everything there you go i've done all the fields as you can see all the fields are done now we have a uh, this is this is the nintex form thing i was talking about so yeah now we have a title column which we do not intend to use in this uh work so we are going to hide the title column how do you hide a title column this is how you do that in the list settings you go into advanced and then you click on that option that allows you to manage the content type that's it and then you click on title and then just hide it now the title column is hidden we just need to take it off from the list view as well so we're just going to edit the current view and just uncheck title. That's pretty much it. Hit OK. There you go. Yeah, we're just going to need ID. So we're just going to put ID up on top. Number one column ID because it's, it's easier. Now again, we need to click on Nintex Forms. Not exactly again, this is the first time you're gonna click on it. And when you click on it, you need to click on the responsive designer, the new responsive designer, and then it is going to open up the Nintex form window, which by default looks like that. Not that fancy, but we are gonna make it look fancy now. So first thing is, we're just going to create a bit of a banner. So this is how you create a banner. I'm just going to do it quickly. I mean, you can get your marketing team to send you some nice looking banner or you can grab some from online. However you want to do it. You need to have a banner image if you want your form to look nice. Okay, I am going to just save that image and going to use that in my Nintex form. There you go. 
now we just need to upload that image yeah you can put that under the side assets or wherever you like i'm just going to create one uh resx one resource folder and then i am going to upload that file the one which i just created for the banner that's it now we are going to get the link for the file and put it under nentex for that i'm going to search for image container put it up on top here under sources i'm going to just paste the link and that's it now i've got that image over here now i need to create some groups I'll create first group and I'm going to put a name to it. Say I'm going to call it service catalog details. Uh, there you go. I want a bit of a line underneath it. So that's it. There you go now i'm going to make it look a bit bigger now i need to start adding all the fields which are specific to service catalog details in this group there you go i forgot to make the service category as a drop down i think i just ended up leaving it to uh, leaving it to be like that i'm just going to change it in some time next time i'm going to go back to my list i'm going to get into this field and change it to the drop down anyways now we need to create another group similarly and going to call it service documentation looking good I hope it's clearly visible now sorry I should have done that earlier now under the documentation because we need people to be able to attach some files so we're just going to put up an attachment option under service documentation and we're going to put in some text any documentation related to the service vendor or contract done very good now or can we need to create one more we just want to change the name of that particular field for the form it is not changing the name of the fields in the back end but now we need to create another group there you go key service dates this will come in handy if the service or the product is just getting expired or reaching the end of support date or if you need to renew it if the contract is expiring the licenses are expiring those kind of things This is how you can actually duplicate as well 
if you want to and then just make the necessary changes in that area that's another option you have I'm just gonna create another label in here and we'll do something with these two fields as well I'll put in date We'll do something with that in a bit. Now we're going to click on save and close. We have not yet published this form. We have only saved it. Now there are a few things. Actually, we'll quickly do one more thing in the Nintex form before we proceed yeah I wanted to show you the versions so right now because we have only saved the form we have not yet published it therefore it was saying 0 0.1 over there now we're gonna click on publish and close that's it now the version is version 1.0 at the back end I'll show that to you in a bit so this is how the form looks now looks pretty decent huh? now we need to still make some more changes to the form we will just do that now I'll just close it oops I should have done some changes to the list to that item for the category and make it drop down I'll do that in a bit and I'll show that to you as well so this is the form which we just published looking good yeah that's the one I should have done that I'll do that shortly all right now let's consider one business rule and that is for example if uh, in the service category excel macros are selected then i want my service documentation to become a mandatory thing if anybody's selecting excel macro i want then they i want they need to upload some documentation they need to mention what that macro is all about etc so how do we do that how do we enforce that rule on the form so you get into the rules tab up on top and then this this is a screen which will come up now here we are going to type a name of the rule first say if service category is excel macro yeah that's a name of the rule then documentation is mandatory that's all what we want to create now you see the if thing here we'll click over there let's we'll quickly fix the typo yep now here we're talking about the service category so here is service category we'll just pick up the field if service category equals excel macros it is as intuitive as you can see on the screen it's beautiful isn't it now then attachments are required yes else we don't want it yeah else is not even a mandatory thing to be filled in unless you really want to put in a rule for else so now when that option will be selected this thing is going to become a mandatory thing that people need to fill it in unless they add a file they'll not be able to save or save the form so let's see how does that look in the real time i'm just going to publish the form let's do that for that matter we're just going to go publish and publish and close it's going to take a few seconds and it's going to publish the form All right, the form is published. Now, let's add a column. 
you want to call it new app details and we need to make some change to this as well so we might as well just do that now while we are here there you go we're just gonna make it drop down so next time when we open up the Nintex forms this field will be changed to a drop down instead of showing us all the options in a normal format there you go now it's a drop down we have more room to play around with fields which is good we'll just take one field up because we created another field new app details so we just need to put that thing in if it is a new app which we are creating then we need to capture that detail as well that's the purpose of this field so if you want to put in a bit of a tooltip or a bit of a description for the field you can do that I'm just going to quickly do something in here that's it all done now we will create another rule if the service category equals new app new app request then the new app details section will also become first of all will be visible otherwise it will not be visible and second it will become mandatory else we do not want it to be visible or mandatory so we're just going to do the require as well to know that's it so before we create the rule we need to give a name to this rule category is new app request new app details will be visible and will become mandatory okay let's click on publish and close okay this is how the form looks now pretty decent if you're going to change the category type then you can see this option is now visible it was not visible earlier it's all happening because we selected that thing so um, as you can and because we're selecting something different it's just disappearing as well so now you have just seen that this is how the rules function this is how you create a form and for form you need a list at the back end and you need to have some fields created in that list yeah you can see that this rule is functioning just fine it, it has made that field mandatory as well because i've selected excel macros so now you have learned rules you have learned how to create forms groups different fields within the form how you publish it um, how you save it versions as well so that's pretty much it for you to be able to create some basic forms please hit like subscribe and share our video it will be very helpful uh, thanks so much for supporting our channel and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to drop in uh, below and i'll try to get back to you guys thanks for watching this far and you guys have a great day bye